Hello everyone and welcome back to TNO, I'm your host, Mercenary Mokolova, and we're going to deal with the madman. Rodzievsky was not having a good day. The sun was too bright, straining his vision as jagged pieces of light fell into his eyes. He did not sleep at all last night, right after they delivered his verdict. He cracked with his fingers through the cuffed hands they were taking him deep into the woods of Siberia in the middle of nowhere far from civilization. He felt his body twitch all over. The withdrawal was encroaching on his mind and an easy cold settled over his bones. <clears throat> The men tasked with escorting him spoke foreign Farley languages that he did not even know the slightest of. All they did was use the muzzles on the rifles to poke Rodzewski forward whenever it seemed that they was closing to stop, or he was close to stop. He knew that someone in the group spoke Russian, he didn't know which was which. The air grew hotter and hotter, swaddling his body with a thin curtain of sweat. <clears throat> His mind wandered to a strange place. He wondered about Matkovsky. They said they never found a body. Rodzewski knew Matkovsky in his sly wits. Siberia was vast and empty. It would take a lot of centuries spread across the general direction to eventually find him. The devil, devil. Matkovsky was his worthy opponent, a fellow Russian who contended for power and not a mercenary out for money. They reached a clearing in the middle of the woods. One of them, the Russian speaker, went on behind Rodzewski and blindfolded and hit his eyes. It seemed like even the mercenaries had a touch of humanity. As his sight failed, he heard footsteps trail behind him and rifles pointed in his direction ready to fire a single shot that would end his life. A voice gave a signal and the enfilad started. Rodzewski fell lifeless onto the ground. The Bandit King is dead, never to return, and we shall continue with... We're going even deeper. After the conquest of Amor, everyone thought they were going home. They aren't. With the money we've got from Rodzewski's coffers, it's barely enough to pay for the mercenaries, much less to ship them back to God knows where they came from. Now is not the time to look for ways to scamper from the problem. We're going to hunker down and go a bit deeper. Maybe this land will provide an answer to our troubles after all. First things first, however, in our naive naive belief that we will skip this godforsaken land with gains made from Rodzewski and Matkovsky's heirlooms, we have not bothered to construct any form of civilian governance over the area. Now that you were booked for a much lengthier stay in Siberia than we thought, it's prime time to establish order over Magadan and Amur. The people of these podunk backwater towns must be itching to leave. For them, we have a business proposition to make. Very nice. Now, I'm talking a little fast just because I've tried to record this earlier, and it actually, like, I don't know what happened. The save file got corrupted, which kind of made me angry, but whatever. But we're doing this anyways. <clears throat> Building the future, when Matkovsky and Rodzewski first sp split the party in the olden days of the anti-Bolshevik front, they did not expect that as they who would come out on top during the power struggle. Warble, hailing from his homeland of America with his foot down in Siberian soil and a face full of dirt from mounts, did not expect it either. Instead, the mercenaries that he led won the Siberian Civil War with a panach, benefiting his long and story career. The dust has settled. We have still enough concerns about pay, equipment, and morale, but for now we are secure to our west lies in the lands of Tsarists. Strange folk who want the Emperor back in charge of Russia. There are the Reds with their little scuffle over the outcome of as opaque as it has ever been. From the north are caravans of Ther. Here are the father nest exploits. The solution to our problems perhaps lies in the Kutian Alden whose mines overflow with gold and diamonds. The future waits and the best is yet to come. I love stability. Now we got these guys here. Do we have a ship yet? No, we do not. That's totally, totally fine. Uh, a couple comments. First of all, someone said that we should wait to acquire anything when we have decisions and focuses that less than coring time? Yeah, we probably should. I just clicked on this as fast as I can just because it's, I want to get it done. I just want to get things done very, very, very quickly if we possibly can. Because we have no manpower and that ain't very good for us. But I do have a, half a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and a little rejuvenated. But, <clears throat> the next focus, please. A haven of our own. Rubble stumbled out of the door drunk. They just hit the jackpot. Metzkos goes out of there somewhere, probably skulking in the shadows, but out of the picture nonetheless. Rozeski was dead with his madness buried six feet deep in the ground alongside his body all over. The former RFP stronghold of Magadan parting had begun. Soldiers and local towns alike mingled with the crowd and alcohol flowed freely from the pub to the offices of the commanders. Rubble drank his fill and he gulped it deeply. He had won until the victor goes to spoils or the swills in his case. In the next room over, the rest of his officers convened, their voices like indistinct bangs and thuds against the wooden wall. Sometimes he could hear a word or two emerge from the discussion, but his whiskey addled mind soaked every last bit with liquor, and every phrase slid drowsily into his brain. No matter, he could trust his officers. They were loyal to more than their, him to more than their paycheck. If it had been the regular bread-and-butter mercenaries, he would have howled at them and shot his revolver all over the room. He looked at the tea-colored substance lying in wait in the gl shot glass on the table, inviting him to take it for a single sip. Maybe he can, maybe not. Better not take the risk. Tonight was a fateful night. He's, his neighbors were making history. The door creaked open. Sir, one of his officers said, We have an important question. Spit it out already, Rubble said, growing impatient. The whiskey might, is mighty tempting. We have nailed the specific nature of the Republic, sir. There's only one question left, and I think you should answer it. It's about the name. Rubble stood up in his hands poised for a theatrical and grandiose display. He said almost at the top of his lungs, We're west from Alaska, toppling from his feet, catching himself up in the last second. West Alaska. 
The officer blinked at him. Excellent choice, sir. Why the heck not? I love West Alaska. It's time for the Republic of West Alaska. We've done the unthinkable. Warbo and his army of mercenaries have deposed the no-money tin pot tyrant Matkowski from the seat of Magadon. His former friend, the bandit king of the Far East, Rodzewski, joined him soon after. The world now waits with bated breath as Warbo found founds the first state for soldiers of fortune. Eschewing the name and conventions in Russia, he's taken to naming his new homeland after the region closest to his old one, West Alaska. However, the new republic needs to establish itself in this foreign land. The mercenary army shall reinforce the regions of Amur and Magadan to root out any fascist opposition against us in the area. Warbo shall invite young men from the villages and towns of sparsely populated Far East to join the soldiers without borders. A new page has appeared in the history of Russia. Whether it goes on to become its own chapter or remain a footnote remains to be seen. Also, like I said earlier, um, like I, I was trying to record this earlier. If if things like fade and fade out, just assume that I'm having like recording issues. Just let just let y'all know. Just let y'all know. But regardless, greater ambitions. Warbo has founded a state. The fascist dissidents in the countryside have either joined us or chosen death to join their puny little vase. However, there's still one more problem. The point of no return is past, and we've condemned ourselves to dig this stretch of barren land till we either strike gold or die trying. We have to shoot the stars with a bullet left in the cartridge. Despite all the odds, all of us agreed it's, it's a bet worth taking on. Let us lift the curtains of Magadan and Amur and gaze upon the rest of the Far East. This land may be sparse and deserted, but there's no shortage of gains to be made for the sharp-eyed mercenary. What are we then but a bunch of the world's craftiest dudes? We look to the north, past the Tsars, and see a land full of milk and honey. The diamonds of Yakuti and the gold of Alden Beckon. Surely more than an average soldier's paycheck, isn't it? Hopefully. Oh, so what can we do here? We can... Oh, oh, scavenging for loot. Ooh, the Sakala Republic. Yes, please. And political campaign. We're going to train our troops because we're out of manpower. Magadan Free Radio Broadcast 64. Today's radio started without hiccups. The audio, which had been rushed in patriotic sounds set to the tune of unmastered sound and constant crackling, was now playing a very soft piano, a classic. Chopin's Nocturne Opus 9, number 2. The particular favorite of some of the mercenaries that worked in Hard Bend. It continued for several minutes until the last tone rang in a smooth, a voice, smooth, controlled baritone took over. Good evening, people of Siberia. A hint of English accent underlaid its Russian... It's, it's Russian language. This is the new language, or the new language, the new Radio Free Magadan, recently liberated from the fascists that had lived there for years. If you just tuned in, this is your host, Stephen, also known as Roast Beef to my French compadres. A carefully controlled laughter. What funny boys. If you're Russian or in Merc parlance, a local, you can call me Strolok. Simple but effective. <clears throat> Oh, excuse me, the voice said, lowering itself away from the microphone, although the percussions were still audible. I apologize for the interruption now due to the generosity of our benefactor, Mr. Wibble Esquire, as he moved to a whisper. Esquire is important. He, re he resumed. If you have any requests, you can send them to our offices in Magadan, right not near beside the old RFP offices. For now, sounds of shuffling papers. It's now time for a surf and safari by the beach boys. That's a stroke, or roast beef, signing off. Smooth rock, commence. At least a professional. At least they are professionals. Great ambitions. How about we bury the past? The Tsars to our west, formerly of Hard Ben's anti Bolshevik front, has so far washed our rise of power with no shortage of apprehension and horror. The puppet Tsar and his followers must be quaking in their boots, fearing for the soldiers of the world to descend into what little backwater town he calls his empire. The sham will not stand. We shall show the Tsar what true empire building is. Who knows? If he survives and wins, maybe he'll learn a lesson or two. We shall crush your defensive lines using the Ultima Ratio Regum. The artillery shall pepper their defenses, letting our men to break through. Once in, our men shall show what the wars of the world look like to these befuddled, confused Russians. No divine right shall protect them from our assault, for God does not help those who do not help themselves. Amen. After dealing with the Tars, the rest of the Far East awaits. The diamonds of Yakutia and the gold of all them are riches waiting to be claimed. We go to war with them immediately, and we shall see what happens against Yakutsk first, or the Saka Republic. They refuse tribute? So be it. C'est la vie. They're going to die. Hopefully. And political campaigns. Yes, military stuff. Raid successful. Awesome. Seize all that we can use. And now let us begin. Ooh. John Peters, eh? Gary Patrick, huh? We gotta go to war with these guys. So I'm actually gonna replace you with someone else. Someone who has more attack. Nancy Wake. Don't mind if we do, Nancy. Well, we're not doing Nancy, but don't mind if we do. Now, we're using some light infantry. She is the head of the government, so. I love authoritarian democracy. Treasure, if you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. We get more political power. Great. Even though I would probably actually prefer stability and war support, but whatever. Uh, industrial equipment is very good. But like I said, yeah, we should probably choose decisions and focuses that allow us to core things a little bit faster. But we have about a week left for Amur, which is not bad. And actually, for these. Ooh. Ah, helicopter engines. Good. And someone's justifying on us. 
So we need to own Cheetah and own Cheetah for both of these. Oh, that's not good. I mean, that is good. That's not bad. It's our ransom, huh? Awesome. So we're doing some of our land auction. I'm just going to. Oh, that's so. That's so long. Holy crap! I'm going to do it anyways. I don't care. Because of who we're playing, I've got to get helicopters. Like, there's, there's no way that we can play as Wobble, Mr. Wobble Esquire, without helicopters. There's no way. I'm not. I'm not going to even risk it. I, we have to do that. Right, so they immediately begin attacking us. So be it. And you guys are actually still taking your time to get down here, huh? Now, can you guys hold out? You might be able to. If that's the case, totally fine with me. <clears throat> Man, my voice keeps cracking. It's like I'm going through a second puberty or something. Now, they might attack us again. I want to get everyone on the line first. Actually, are they moving somewhere? No. Ooh, a division. <clears throat> Alrighty, daddy. Now, hopefully they attack us again. Okay, I do want to attack these guys here first. Or attack them here, but we need more divisions in total. Mm. Which is fine. Fine, fine, fine. No infrastructure still for some reason. How are we building? Three. Not great. Alright. I kind of don't want to wait anymore. So, let's see. Here we are. Can we help attack here? We might be able to. Oh, oh! <clears throat> my apologies. My voice keeps cracking. But we do have 29,000 manpower. Finally, we have Cord Amour, which is very, very bueno. Beat up those truckers. Iberian announces the creation of the Iberian Council. Well, that's another comment from yesterday. Someone recommends we play as either Italy or Iberia. Well, if you didn't know, I've actually already played as uh, the Iberian Union once already. And it was a lot of fun. I wasn't perfect at it. Um, but yeah. It barely was a lot of fun. Now, someone to did tell me the other day that they might be removing the market liberal path for Iberia, so someone says I should play that. Uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know. No guarantees. I might play that just as a one-off, just for funsies. So, we'll see what happens. Are you both going? No, just one. Um, just let one guy go that way. Oh, and Hitler's dead. Goodbye, Hitler. Have a good day. And you have been surrounded. Good, let them starve, let them try to come out. Uh, what do we have here? Secure control? Yeah, we're going to need more stability for where we're headed. Let them waste their lives on the line. Three divisions left. Oh. Give them a few more days. You know. They weaken themselves by attacking, so then we'll attack and return. Actually, we have 15. We did court uh, Amur. Alright, everyone, sorry about that, but the game was about to crash, or at least the mob was about to crash. So I had to, uh, you know, fade in, fade out. That's why the last, like, few, few seconds were just, like, frozen in time. Yeah, TNO, I don't know, man. Oh, Germany also fell into Civil War, as as you can see over here. But, yeah, TNO, I don't know. It, it, it makes the game lag so hard that it could potentially crash. And just makes it makes everything stop, which is very, very not good. So, yeah. Mm. But they're still wasting their lives. Good. Go ahead and start attacking. Call in some support. That'd be fine. And then we'll just probably end them. There you go. And the gun. Cool. Combine operations. Please. Oh, please don't lag. Come on. Please, 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 please. Oh, yeah. This is... Why is it lagging so hard? What is going on? Seriously. Like... I'm not sure what's going on, but there's nothing in, like, for... At the time of me recording this... There's nothing I'm doing in the background. Like, I'm not trying to process any of the videos. But it is getting kind of un somewhat unmanageable. Holy crap. You know, I don't have the best computer, but I have a pretty good one. Hmm. Good. Yeah, these guys should be, able to, should be able to do well. Oh, every time it lags, I just get worried now. Oh, my goodness. Hidden heroes, all right. There go the Serbs. Darnit sees Crimea. Okay, you, you, you can guys just keep letting me know, like who's going to get released today. <laughs> oh, come on, stop lagging so much. Oh, look, you want to attack? 
Oh my god. Seriously. Good, let them waste their strength. That'll be good. And here we go. At this point, have everyone attack and force it. Force them down. Now we're losing a little bit of strength here, but that's okay. Okay, that general government is gone. The Poles have succeeded. And even though this is a very costly attack, there's nothing else that we could really do. A oh, coup in Norway. We've lost 3,000, they've lost 11,000. I'm expecting a slightly higher casualty since we're forcing the attack, so. Okay. ANC, please. I don't think the ANC is going to do that well here. Just saying. Do they even have a focus tree? No, they're libertarian socialists, but no, they do not. Now, Cheetah should be running out of manpower soon. And eventually, once this war is over, I'm going to convert all of our divisions, hopefully, to better infantry divisions. 1,000 manpower, 5 divisions max. Nice. Let's go and stop making this division. Goodbye. Nice. Force it. You gotta, you gotta crush them. You gotta fight over the river. I don't care what happens. It doesn't matter. You've got to win. And you guys are helping out right there too, so. Doesn't matter to me. Come on. Come on. They're not that difficult to break through. That's why I usually don't like using light infantry. It, they're just not that good. They're good for resistance and such, but... Uh, do we have any upgrades? Warble, do you have any upgrades? Uh, not really. Uh, reinforcer, maybe. But, okay, so this is really pathetic. Holy crap, why can you not win there? Guys, seriously, what the heck is wrong with you? Just go in. They're not that... They have, like, no strength left. Ay, ay, ay. That's why... Playing as a Russian unifier is going to be pretty... You know what? You know, we're just going straight in. Either you attack them, they can't reinforce their lines anymore. They cannot get any more strength. Now, we're probably out of guns or something. No, we've got plenty of equipment. Enough guns, enough support equipment, enough anti-tank too. Algerian war, fighters, of course we need some planes as well, but hey, that's just us. Either win or die. They have literally no strength left. They literally have nothing left. And these are mercs, so what do you expect? You hold, and you're going to attack over the river right there. Oh, stop lagging. Please stop lagging. Oh, we're going to get surrounded, aren't we? You are going to keep them in place. Come on. What do we have over here? Anything? Trainer troops, that'll be good. Just in case again. You're going to go right there, and you are just going to go straight for the capital. Oh my gosh. Are you serious right now? Are you, are you guys this pathetic? Yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm converting these guys immediately. I'm sorry, guys. These guys are just too weak. They're just too pathetic to do anything. I hate light infantry so much. It's so so worthless. What? No. So you're telling me they get more manpower back or something? No, 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 no. Well, you're coming in here, and you're going to... Smack the living heck out of them. And you're going straight up that way. <sighs> Somehow they find more manpower. And I'm going to keep forcing the attack. Until they die. Good. Well, they get supplies now, which is good. You're going to help the attack right here. Come on, guys. Come on. Help support the attack as well. They literally have no extra strength to spare. That's it's the infrastructure investments, factories worth it. And they leave. Actually, I don't mind them coming over here. Oh, now I do. Now they just put another division over there. Yeah, I don't think so. Let that division leave, and then we're gonna attack right here. Um, I'm pretty sure I converted you too, son. Uh, get those guys to leave. Um, I'm pretty sure I told you to help support the attack. I apologize for me struggling here. You know, I don't know what's going on with Cheetah, but... They're pieces of garbage, obviously. So, 
All right, come on, your trucks, get out of there. There you go. You can just attack this way. Force it. They, they literally can't reinforce anymore. They have nothing. And... He's gonna attack here. I don't even care. Come on up, support it, support it. You've got to win here. Either one, either one of these two. It doesn't really matter to me. So we've got how long? How many more days? Four, six, five. Oh, okay. Now we got more attack. Good. We've lost thirteen thousand. We lost twenty-two thousand. Yep, never again in this campaign. I'm going to, in this. I'm I'm going to be using light infantry unless it is specifically for garrisons. No, you're going to attack immediately. You, there's no waiting. There's absolutely no waiting around here. Nope, cheat is going to be ours. <clears throat> so I do apologize for my rage in this. A little bit of rage, just a little, just a little bit. But that's complete BS. Like somehow they keep getting a little bit more strength back. Yeah, no, 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 no. You know what? Kill these guys off too. They don't deserve life. Oh, we got the airbase captured. If you like to read about the airbase, I don't really feel like reading it right now, so go right ahead. I mean, we can't even make things anyway, so here we go. Alright, finally, the Cheetah Training Academy. When our troops pass through the towns and villages of West Siberia, you would not believe the masses of young men begging for a chance to enter the legendary mercenary Werbel's army. The issue is, well, it boils down to their circumstances. See, these potential recruits come from the backgrounds just similar to our own. Some are fishers, some are traders. Some have not even seen a rifle in all their lives. With such a feeble base of knowledge, it would only become burdens in the upcoming battles in Siberia. Fortunately, the recent conquest of Cheetahs provided Werbel the opportunity to tap into what little personnel that the Far East can give him. He plans to build a new training academy for all Russians intending to join his host there. Our veterans and senior officers shall staff this new educational establishment, ensuring that no recruit goes into the war, not knowing which end of the gun they should be pointing the towards the enemy. Good. Now, let's go and do this. Integrate immediately, and not rage too much more, and part of the reason why we didn't win is, actually, let's see, if you guys, you have military police on, you guys are ready. Uh, just, actually, you already have some of those guys. Just change this to military police. There you go. Let's make sure we change this. There you go. Local police force. Um, I'm just going to probably leave it there. I don't really care too much, actually, about that. Military factories. Oh, we're going to make some planes, too. Nice. Gun-wise, we're doing okay. That's okay. I want helicopters, which is going to take some time. Ooh, Cass. Yeah, let's get rid of you. Cass is just better overall. Tanks. We're not going to focus on tanks at all. And, um, I guess more, more planes. Why not? For now. It's part of the reason now why we didn't win as fast as I hope we would is because I forgot that our infantry sucks. It really does suck. It's not very good at all. It's only 12 combat with. So, let's use up the rest of our manpower and make these guys 20 combat with that minimum they have to be. We just didn't have the strength. All we have are just a bunch of guys running around with guns. That's it. Army interoperability. Uh, recon. This stuff recon. This recon. Uh, slightly more recon. Can we actually afford this one? Yeah, we can. Why not? Enough army XP. Eh, we can save the rest for later. Cool. And support companies. Pretty good. No manpower, but whatever. Oh, please don't lag the game anymore, man. Please, please, please. Gods of the North? Okay. The North Awakens. Amidst the entire or the endless warfare of the Russian Far East, few men have bothered to pay attention to the frigid lands to the north. Beyond a few abandoned mountain towns, isolated Chuk Chi villages and wandering nomads, the area was assumed to be more or less abandoned. A few madmen were said to occasionally find their way up there, attempting to establish their own empire in the cold, but the land bitterly refused to be tamed. The state of anarchy is now ended. It began with the hymns, travelers brought tales of entire villages united in prayer, singing songs of hope and peace in the name of the Lord. This hardly seems unusual. Russia has been a godly land even through the days of the Union, but when many travelers all began speaking of the same tales coming from so many different villages, our leaders began to suspect that something was amiss. Now we know why. An emissary has arrived in our midst from the now unified North. He came only to deliver a message, a message of judgment delivered from his master's so-called father men. His fathers proclaimed the entirety of the North to belong to the single Union in the name of God, declaring that we have committed a grievous sin and have besmirched the lands of holy Russia. He is vowed to lead his flock of faithful against us and deliver us two things, divine wrath and divine salvation. We'd hope that this was some trick, but earlier our scouts are reporting movement on the northern borders. But the north is indeed coming, and their hems grow louder and louder by the day. We must ready our forces to meet this army zealots head on. It will seem, however, that there are some amongst us who would rather lead this place and pleasure their life in the name of the Mad Crusade? Mm, no, we must prepare for this new threat. We must. Alright, so we got to get agricultural methods next, which is good. And integrating cheetahs is going to take s too long, man. That's, it. That's too long. Oof. Uh, go ahead and hold, then. Get everyone up here to the line. If we could take these guys out quickly, that'd be great. And the Cheetah Academy training, the fate of the Tsar. Tsar! 
Tsar Mikhail's presence at the parties was nothing more than a series of unhappy accidents. An Australian by birth, he heeded the invitation. My apologies about this. Invitation to join a dinner party in Siberia, not knowing that he was the only claimant to do so. Later on, the Tsars found, much to their shock, that Mikhail in actuality held, held no legitimate claim to the Russian throne. His father's non-dynastic marriage ensured that he was illegitimate as best, a usurper at worst. Still, we must decide what to do with him. We're both taking the luxury of treating the prince with generosity. The kid is no threat. However, he may still have his use. Hailing from the well-off family, perhaps we can ship him back to Australia in a flash, using our delivery services to make sure that he will be right as rain when he gets back. Of course, such premium transportation should earn us a little more than a pat on the back. We'll call his family tell them to keep in touch. Very, very good. What do we have over here? Uh, let's see. Divine Mandate? Ooh, can we actually beat the Divine Mandate? They're probably not too easy to beat. Sermon of the Father. Does not manpower? I don't know. I don't trust my army anymore because they're not very good. <laughs> I'll be realistic with you guys. They're not very good, but we can try it, you know. There the Tsar. Gita Training Academy is not bad. Oh, we removed in two years, huh? Minimum training level. Horrible. Oleg Nakhimov. Okay. Mikhail Lazarev. Alright, alright. We got 11 days left for the focus. We got a lot of days left for this stuff. Oof. And how's our industry looking? Three out of. It went down. Oh, huh, it was. Oh, that was five. Five out of 20. Okay. Very weird, very weird. Are our soldiers ready? Give them up. Five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead. Hopefully we can win even if they refuse tribute. Warlord development. Secure control. Absolutely. We need more stability. Oh, they pay the tribute. Great job, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, just in case, now, the Sokka Republic might want to attack us. So I'm going to do that just because they might want to raid us off. The fate of the Tsar, though. And I'm Yakutsk. Yakutsk is a small frontier republic that happens to reside right across the border. In any other circumstance, we would not have gone after them this quickly. However, their lands contain something much more valuable than workers or industrial capacity. Tales of diamonds and riches stemming from its trades travel south and eventually reaching the ears of Werble. With the booming size of our armed forces, these jewels would be useful in procuring pay for their upcoming mercenaries. The plan for our next step is clear. We're attacking the Republic of Yakutia, not out of spite or personal grievances, but necessary pragmatic interests. Without ideological support and only guarded by local militiamen and outlaws brought over by the promises of high pay, Yakutia will not be much of a challenge. The issue is time. The powers of the parties will set their sights upon this land soon, and if we're not quick, then chance could be lost forever. Alright, I guess Irkutsk is next. Hopefully, no one else attacks us. As we're doing what must be done. At Tsar's Ransom, the former Tsar of all Russia sat on the unadorned, smooth concrete floor of his prison. The garb he was wearing did not resemble what he had worn for years. Rough, threadbare, and bearing only a single color. His medals, the lapels, it Unearned magnificence, all gone, scattered to the winds like the wise who had protected him. At least the guards spoke English, and they would frequently joke with him and bring him the best of the prison rations, which now lay before him. Some soup with beans and a few slices of bread and a glass of water, not much, but, he, but enough. Today's guard, Jack, had told him to dig into his food ASAP, as he phrased it. An honored guest was coming, Jack said, and he did not want to piss off the sky. Mikhail had known who his visitor was from the start, dressed in prison uniform and fed like the lowest worker in the world, and Mikhail's veins still flowed with imperial blood. It didn't used to be like this. He had no claim to anyone's throne, but and his crown did not fit in all of this for a piece of poorly cooked steak. The bars of his prison clanked open, and the gaps of Mitchell warbled, and an interpreter. Mikhail stood, first a little unsteadily, and after a few seconds, staggered to meet him. Who might be his executioner or savior? I can't speak. I can speak English. Mikhail said. The interpreter is unnecessary. Warbol nodded his head at this. Uh, nodded his head at his aid. Who immediately went away. So Warbol said, sizing Mikhail up and down. A Russian Tsar with a limely uh, English accent, huh? Truth is stranger than fiction, indeed. He took Mikhail by the shoulder, and the two of them sat down together on the Tsar's humble bed next to his latrine. Uh, I'm not English. Mikhail said before stopping, interrupting Werbel might not be wise. Mr. Romanov, Werbel gestured to Mikhail. What? That is your name? Mikhail nodded. You know, I'm not really sure why you're here, and I can let you go, of course, for a small cost. Hey, your dad is in deep pockets for royalty. It should be nothing for you. How, how much? For a small cost of half a million dollars, I'll put you on a skipper headed for England, Australia, wherever. I don't have that kind of money. Then you are sure as crud. Should hope your father has. Mikhail was silent, then he slowly nodded. I'm glad we've reached an understanding. Werbel left, and the present claim shut once more. Better than death, surely. Well, good for him. We'll see what happens. Now, Irkutsk is probably going to be a little bit of a problem because they're under Yagoda. They're probably not too bad. Five or seven divisions, though. We do have ten. But we got to be ready. You know what? I would love to make this division. We need some more manpower. I'm really hoping here that we can get to, through another month before these guys go to war with us because Divine Man of Siberia. Pseudoplatov's Brigade, huh? Hopefully they go to war with Chamkatcha blah, 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 blah. and then go to war with Yakutia because, well, I can't really afford and leave my 
port exposed here, that would not be very good for us, now would it? And we'll be led by Yegor Kolchak. Okay. Keep training until you die. Because they'll probably actually die there. So, we're almost to the line. Almost ready to go there. And for investments, we need to own Yakutsk to do anything else. Which kind of sucks, but whatever. Alright, where is their army? Um, I'm not really sure where their army is. Okay, well, whatever. Alright, let's go ahead and move on in. We'll do whatever we can. Guys. Please. Can we... You know? Sometimes I wonder what the AI is like. Like, what is it What is it currently doing? What, what, what's going on? Why can we go in? Wait, is, are we not at war? Oh, wait, no. Oh, duh. I said it's... Yakutia. Not... Oh, my goodness. I am so sorry. My mind, obviously, is fried. So, after this war, I'm just going to go ahead and... Oh, my goodness. Holy cow. My apologies, everyone. I'm like, Irkutsk, Irkutsk. No, it's Yakutia. Mr. Mocha Lover, what is wrong with you? I have no idea. What is wrong with me? I can't read, apparently. And I can't figure out the difference between a red country and a darkish, blackish country. What is wrong with me? I apologize, guys. That is my fault completely. Oh, my goodness. Well, no wonder we can't go to war with Irkutsk. Because we have to go to war with the Yakutsk, not Irkutsk. Maybe the Y and the I just confuse me. I don't know. My mind is apparently slipping. Woof. Yeah, you could yeah, not that bad. Too bad we can't read. Oh, they're out of divisions. Too bad we can't read them anymore. Coup in Scotland? Ah, yes, the Aryan Brotherhood, the Islamic Republic of Bashkortostan. Goodbye, Bashkortostan. So now it's going to be a three-way war between us or Kutsk and probably divine man in Siberia. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, we can still scavenge for more loot soon. All right, so do we we must have cored the other place. And still not enough. Man, we need more manpower. Holy Crotorinos. Train some more troops. Ah, oh, the sins of our roots. Sin cometh not from the font of darkness, shadow, and abomination in the world any longer. Rather, sin works in disguise, beguiling mankind through attraction and lust to bring them more closely to the realm of Gehenna. See, yes, the very valley of Hinnom, Hinnom fills this earth with the money lender, the bandit, and the embezzler. As a father so greatly marches into the depths of one such pit of sin. Son and father, brother and brother, the fraternal militia of our faith follow the follower into such a place that day, weary from their travels, yet never more wishing for the corruption of decadence to strike the heart of our home again. Thus, what needed to be done was ordered forth by the father. The money lender's banks were forced clothes, shutting out the serpent of sin. Look back. <coughs> the bandit uh, was arrested for that day, to be tried on the order of violations of the Holy Scripture. And then Bezer, how greatly did he plead as he was brought away from his wretched place of sloth and greed. However, as the crackling of gunfire began, so greatly did the fraternal return hostility, sending forth our father into a fit of remorse, as a soldier so greatly went forth, bringing the burning judgment of our Lord down. And thus, in accordance with the will of the Lord, so too did the village burn that day, so that the holy fires may cleanse this land from putridity and sin. However, as the soldiers and the judges of mankind under one holy God cried out in praise and victory, so greatly did our father fall to his knees in the sky, in that sky adorned his cloak with the flakes of heavenly frost, and so it was then that he wept. The Lord's word, that is what we serve. Well, I don't know about you, but... Well, maybe, maybe we'll get there. We'll see what happens. Man, we need more manpower, too. Woof. Mercenary state. Okay, at least, at least we get more attack and defense. It's nice. Alright, man, they're gone. My apologies. My mind must be slipping. You know what? Divine mandate against them. Supreme Presidium. Um, Let's see. I'd rather risk it with the Divine Mandate, so. Good luck. And let's do that. And you know what? I will be right back to see if I can pronounce and do a little better. Alright, everyone. My apologies. I really do apologize for that, you know, getting a little ragey. But I went ahead and had... Took a little break from it. Let's put it like that. Took a little break. So, let's do our next focus, shall we? Diamonds from their ashes or foreign investments? I like foreign investments. The Republic of Yakutia is no more. Their diamond mines, once owned by Russians and Yakuts, are now in our hands with the number of workers and equipment that are there. We could expand our army as well as raising the wages of our soldiers currently in our pay. However, as an American, enough is insufficient for Weibo. There must be a way for it to squeeze more out of the mines, and luckily for the Republic of West Alaska, he already has a plan in mind. The crucial issue of the first diamond mining operation is that there were no more markets receptive enough to its supply nearby. Warbull can rectify this problem. He will call executives and his acquaintances across America, and all will swarm him for the stock of his newly found fortune. He will cut them a deal, slightly lower prices for the newest state-of-the-art mining equipment, after all. We are running a business, not a charity here in West Alaska. Very, very good now. Hopefully we can... 
Ooh, let's see, we're preparing a raid against these guys, and where is this going to take place? Over here. So we must be ready with soldiers here as well. Give it a few more days, even if, if we can, we're not going to do it immediately. That's for the best. And we've about two months until we integrate Yakutia. Oh, my goodness. Oof. Oh, that's going to do new industrial equipment as well. Oop. And there goes Tricky Dick. We gotta get these guys moving over here a little bit faster. Come on, guys. Move those chubby little legs. Uh, oh, they're looking pretty bad, too, so let's go and do it. Let's try it. Why not? Foreign investments. Diamonds from their ashes. We've defeated the Yakuts for what we did. We, we now inherit the heirloom of the meek. The supply of diamonds in West Alaska is now ours. With the current output, we can feed and pay our existing mercenary companies with a little more comfort than before. However, phrases like little more are not enough for men like Werbel, and if his ambition were to reach as far as he wants it to, we would need, or he would need perhaps a thousand times more. From the ashes of the short lived independence, we shall claim the riches of the earth. Our men will go from every village and town in West Alaska, forming labor battalions from the wide eyed young men who always are thrilled to join our little operation. Then they will work in the mines with the same rate as it was under the Republic of Yakutia. Who knows? If they're good enough, perhaps they can prove their worth and join the real mercenary companies someday. They refuse tribute. So be it. And... Wait. It's over here. It, it said over here. Did it? I'm pretty sure it said over here earlier. That's why I was looking at this. But hey, you know what? If there's no one over here... And maybe they can't get over there in time. Well, it could be worse for us. Hey, we have 25 factories now. Wow. 25. We're making quite a bit of cast, which is actually pretty good to do. And we're going to need a few more guns to... Let's go to Margaret Thatcher, elected English Prime Minister. Oh, and they go at war with the Pacific Fleet. Well, that should not cancel our raid. That honestly should not cancel our raid at all. So, I don't agree with that. I really don't. That is dumb. That should not happen. Just because you go to war doesn't mean that we get screwed over. That does not make very much sense, now does it? Alright, let's see. Do we have any extra planes? We have two fighters. Please, game... Oh, someone is... Oh, we have no manpower, that's true. If that's the case, who's trying to do this? Oh, Erkutsk. Okay. Well, it's a good thing we're putting our soldiers over here, then. Not bad, not bad. And... Operation Miranda, huh? Alright, so be it. And we shall have this one done too. Dogs of War. More. Ooh. Special Forces Attack and Defense. Firebase modes. Less supply consumption for three years. Guns of West Alaska. Well, let's do Dogs of War. Our battle hardened forces have come far from the refrigerated waste that surround the port town of Magadan. We've defeated both the, of the fastest power brokers in the region as well as the Republic of Yakutia. Claiming their supply of diamonds for ourselves, even though they have fought throughout the world before, our soldiers find themselves pushed to their limits, coming out on top despite the lopsided odds and numbers, equipment, and motivation. Luck is blessed, Werbel, and the most hardened soldiers of the world. However, we're not interested in the mere good. From the ranks of this current soldiers, Werewolf shall pick and choose whatever his fa he favors and believes to be the quintessential elite soldier. He shall assemble them to a single unit. Their pay will be higher and their only occupation, the preparation for war. When the time comes, these soldiers will push themselves forward further than any man can. They will become the dogs of war. Very, very good. Alright, hey, at least they're going to go to war with us, which means that we will get a defensive bonus. Now, if Nancy, could you move your soldiers a little bit faster? That'd be really ideal. Or Dodd's elected president of Mexico. Well, good good luck, Mr. President. Or, I guess, president elect, whatever. You're going to need it. Man, we really need more manpower. Can we please core this a little bit faster? Less than a month. Well, we could try to raid, I guess. They're probably not going to back down, though. A little bit of lag, and... There goes President Kennedy. Bye-bye, President Kennedy. Goodbye, have a good day. They're going to go to war with us very soon. Actually, that right why well, screw us up. I'm, I'm waiting, expecting any day now that this is going to happen. There they go. Yeah, I can't have it right now. Whatever. Whatever. Go and try to get down here. Maybe we can encircle them. Now, these soldiers, while they don't look great, they're actually not too bad, seeing as we did upgrade them at least a little bit. Now, are you going to move in and attack me, or what? What's going to happen? Oh, I did not select you. What the heck? No, 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 no. You guys stay right there. You guys stay right there. The goal is to encircle and destroy all those soldiers. Hopefully Kamchatka. They're actually doing well. Wow, look at that. They actually expanded out maybe a little bit. Nice. You guys keep it up. Why is this all blue? Um, yeah, it's all blue for some reason. Not really sure why, but whatever. Oh, fighting a land war in Asia. Not great. Not great. Actually, you, you stay there. You move up further north. And dogs of war. 
Fire Base Moses. The Spider Victor and Yakuti are forced to still need the time to recover and rest before moving on to their next target. Meanwhile, the Reds and the mythical father in the north moved in the shadows, fighting their wars and settling their debts without our knowledge in the, their affairs. Starved of knowledge and intel, any move to claim and conquer the north and the west would be risky. While we rest and recuperate, we need to gather more information on our enemies. Thankfully, we've just a thing. We shall rebuild or build Firebase Moses, a forward operating base planted at the very edges of our political and practical control. From there, our troops will inform the high command of any slight changes in the composition and positioning of our soldiers' divisions. Half the battle is knowing yourself, Sun Tzu once said, and the other is knowing your enemy. With this move, we have made one more guarantee to our success here in the Far East. Very, very good. Let's see. So I've. How many divisions do they have, actually? Up to 12. So we, we're pretty equal in terms of number of divisions-ish. Actually, you know what? I don't mind. If if we come down here and encircle this division, that'd be great. Just because... Oh, they're actually moving around, too. Oh, I see. Oh, they might have found out what we're up to. No, no, no. No, no, no. This way. This way. This way. Andale. Andale. Because we'll get Alden. We'll crush these three divisions here, which would be good. Good. Oh, they left. They're not attacking anywhere else, which is fine. You know what? If you're moving down here and you're having no problems, go up to take the uh, victory points. These divisions should be good enough to help hold and destroy these guys. There we go. Now, we could begin attacking, but we don't have a lot of manpower, just saying. Um, I think he's just moving around. No, they're just kind of sitting there. All right, whatever. Actually, you guys go there. And Russia is falling apart, and we love it. Oh, you actually won, huh? Cool. Yeah, we probably really do need to start attacking this group here. Help support the attack if you can. Get rid of them so this way they can't. We can't. We don't need to deal with them later on. Oh, what do we have? Scavenge for loot. Don't mind if we do. Don't mind if we do. How's Kamchatka doing? They're doing relatively okay. Actually, do they have any divisions? Well, let's do the guns of West Alaska first. When he was still on Metkovsky's payroll a few months ago in Magadan, Werbel once proposed that he has connections throughout the world underworld that would let him procure guns at a lower price. Unbeknownst to Metkovsky, Werbel's relations to his lucrative market did not stop at rifles alone. Artillery guns, uniforms, supplies, and other essential tools of war. If you can name it, Werbel's got it, and at a cheaper rate, too. With it, limited industrial capacity in the Far East due to the Reds' negligence during the Soviet period. Werbel now has to pull out all the stops, and ensuring that his army of soldiers without borders stays well equipped and ready to attack at any time. No number shall go uncalled, no associate go unpressed. All shall go into the duty of making sure that the West Alaska stays afloat for as long as possible. The remnants of the Reds and Father's forces may seem small and insignificant, but it's far better to be safe than sorry. Very, very good. Actually, how many divisions do you have? A uh, one! You got a, a Marine Division. Well, that's better than nothing, I suppose. But still, you guys go and help out down here, too. This way, get rid of these guys, and we can focus more on... More divisions on the actual front here. Oh, they have motorized, which is not good for us. Oh, you guys have actually going there. Um. Okay, why is it lagging? What's going on, game? What's going on? It, it must be auto saving or something like that. You guys go there, there, there. Cut that division off. You're just gonna hold, maybe, for now. What? No, no. For the love of God, no, no. I'm cutting you off. No. To hell no. You're going straight up that way. Good. Now kill that division off. Good, 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 good. For the love of God, that's that's good. Reports from Moses. Nancy Wake is not un unaccustomed to the conduct of espionage. She sat in her new office, formerly owned by the RFP member Nikolai Petlin, where the whereabouts unknown. Receiving reports and issuing orders. Her duty was that of a spider to construct webs of informants, local contacts, and spies in hopes of snaring a valuable piece of intel, or perhaps even just a snitch or two. Her mind is tuned to the changes in the web, just like how a spider can feel a snag any object that cut itself in its structure. This morning, her mind polished in the bitter wash of coffee, she had received a report from Firebase Moses, and did not disappoint her. Caco cocooned in a file before what was what she had always wanted along, juicy, valuable intel. She could feel the venom emanate from this particular document, however. Firebase Moses had seen activities in the north, although it hadn't coalesced in anything concrete. All reports of civilian movement seemed inconclusive. Tracking the cursory subsensory subsensory flow of people to the barren north was pointless, not to mention exhausting and taxing. Opening the file, she rustled through its contents, hastily written notes, blurry photographs, and a word that echoed all over and over. The father, the father, the father. She leaned back in her chair and considered her options. The newly installed telephone sat across from her. She lifted the receiver. Then the equivalent in Orbel's office would also ring. Without a doubt, she reached for it. This is Wake. I may have some news. Oh, wait. We got some manpower. Nice. I'll take that. You know what? You keep attacking. You know why? So we can get rid of these pieces of garbage. Keep Kamchatka busy. Now attack and kill these people off. This is a very costly maneuver. But we have to do it. Oh, let's grab some more recon for a recon. Good, 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 good. 
Good, your your motorized. Oh, well, Auden will be ours now, and then motorized will be killed as well. Send him this way. I'd rather have him go this way than anything else. Very nice, very nice. Actually, you say you guys stay there. You're gonna come up to here and then go all the way up to there if you can. Uh, let's see. So they have up to seven divisions max, which is good, good, good for us. Good. Are you guys? Yep, you taking it up. Great. Can you do some more training, maybe, please? C secure control, yeah. We're going to need more stability. And we're out of manpower again. Gosh darn it. I want you to go there. Good straight to Irkutsk. I wish we had some motorized or something here. The guns of West Alaska don't mind if you do. The world calls for what work? With the establishment of a relative uh, authority over much of the Far East, we've come to possess a diamond mine or a not so imp imperial ransom in the Academy of Cheatham. Despite the availability of the latter's facilities to train our troops from the backwater Russians, we have a shortage of recruits with adequate quality. However, we are soldiers without borders, and it may be time to look to the outside world for help. Until recently, our reputation in the global underworld is that more of a mere curious object, something of a fad that gives away after a brief time. After the conquest of Yakutia, however, we have taken quite an interesting or quite an interest in our work. If we are to, say, put a call outwards to rather the mercenaries into West Alaska, we would receive quite a lot of applications. Or we'll do just that. If the influx of new blood in the ranks of West Alaska shows sure that no division should go understaffed without personnel. Good, that's something we need really, really badly right now. Really, really badly. Holy cow. Now, we're going to try to go this way. And we could try to, like, cut them off completely. It probably won't work. And that's what we're kind of trying to do right here. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Ta Taximo. Huh. Taximo. My main goal is those to finish this war up as fast as possible so we can only have to focus on um, the Divine Mandate of Siberia by itself. Now, Chamkatka. Oh, they're losing their only division up here. That sucks. Yeah, we got... So basically, we have a time limit, which I don't like. Actually, if you take out this tile... Well, you're almost there, so I'm going to let you guys roam on ahead. You guys go up to there, and then you guys begin attacking. Oh, hello. What are you doing? No, 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 no. Ah, see, you have been caught. No, sir, you will not survive. Come on, if you can move up there quickly enough, you can do pretty well. Good, good, good. Hopefully those two divisions, can, that's all they need to take them out. Awesome, another encirclement. Very, very, very good. Awesome. Uh, you guys go right there and then do that. That's fine. Are you guys moving at all? Uh, a little bit, yeah. That would suck. But so you're not. Don't let him move. There you go. Help him out. Come straight to Akutsk. Oh, there goes Bowman's Germany. And then you go right there. We're about ready to cut these guys off. That's awesome. Calls for what work. The Siberian Expedition, the time for r and r is over. Siberia waits. The Republic of West Alaska should not be sated with only four states as its members. With the influx of mercenaries from our previous call, it would be a waste to have them sit around and do nothing while the money trickles in. West Alaska must expand deeper into Siberia to the territories west and north. The world shall not rest until he has a whole of the Far East in his hands. For expansion plans, we have three avenues that we can pursue. First, the Reds to the west. It appears that though there are conflicts within their ranks as the rightful successor of the Union, but it matters very little to us. We will crush both of them. To the north, we are the father and forces of peasant militia who are no problem for our elite mercenaries to handle. Lastly, we have the state of Alden, with well, his gold mines protected by small time hired guns. Whichever we choose, the momentum of the West Alaska must not stop. Now, can we get, can we like put out the call for more men? We got 700 here, that's not bad, but. Ah, here we go, answering the call. Good. Smith looked over the pitiful port of Magadon, a few planks for rotten wood ju jutting out to the cold, brackish waters of the North Pacific. On the other side of the ocean is heaven on earth, the USA. Land, freedom, and Liberty, of countless land and infinite money, Smith, from his days and nights in the city of Bonfontaine, has seen America from the covers of magazines and the brief, barely legible photographs of monochrome newspapers. War is a business, and business was good, yes, but he didn't want to shoot at the natives forever. No, he had dreams beyond a settled America and finally end a roaming sedentary life. As images of kitschy glitz fluttered in his mind, of paperback romance books, of the descriptions of one shining city after another, he saw the ship bearing new arrivals of Warble's latest scheme. No doubt his occupants held the same kind of dreams that Smith had. To settle down somewhere quiet where, somewhere where they could enjoy the winnings of a life spent on betting against fate and coming on top again and again. Smith would rather be in the fun, front lines right now where the days pass quickly. An assignment is still an assignment, however, and... Uh, at least there was pay. He had to watch over the soldiers and guide them to their new quarters, guide them through the modest town, and generally help them acclimate. He went over his own words in his mind, the greetings, jokes, and he would handle and juggle especially inflated egos. He lit a cigarette and took a drug, or drag. He played it by ear. 
His future pro problems were for his future self. For now, he enjoyed the small luxury afforded to him and made a joke to his past, something only he would ever know. He laughed and watched as a vessel ambled its way through the waves, ever coming closer by the minute. A calm before a storm. Oh, we got a slight bit more manpower. And it's going to be gone instantly, I bet. Oh, Tomsk. Oh, I've, I've never seen Tomsk. Wait, hold on. I I've played as Tomsk before. They've unified as them. They're, the modernists have... Okay, that's kind of cool. I've never seen that. I don't think I've seen that happen. Maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. But I don't think I've seen that happen before. So that's actually really cool. You guys attack him here. Oh, there goes Komi. Oh, they have another division right there. Oh, they're going to cut us off. But you know what? If we get to our goods and places over here, that's not too bad. You guys go right there. Go to there. Go to there. Because you need all those places to do that stuff. Cool. Now beat him up. Good, good, good. Now everyone just go right on ahead. There goes Hadrish. Oh, no, no. Borman conquers Hadrish, huh? And like I said, that manpower is completely gone already. Oh, no, 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 no. Help out, help out. Now, we've been surrounded, but it, it'll be all right. Once we get to Irkutsk, it'll be okay. Kransk, huh? Come on, we're getting closer, closer. Oh, what can we do here? Train our troops? You bet we will. Can we raid anybody else or scavenge for more loot? Uh, Irkutsk Hydroelectric Station captured the city of Irkutsk, recently taken by Siberian armies. The mighty hydroelectric station has come under our control. Constructed under the order of Genrik Yevgod after the Soviet Union was pushed back to the corners of Siberia. This work of infrastructure reliably generated some energy for the entire city under his command. A mighty symbol of Russian mastery over nature. The Irkutsk Hydroelectric Power Station may also be a symbol of our control over the Siberian frontiers amidst the chaos of warlordism in the east. Given the immense amount of electricity gathered from the currents of the river, we can utilize the potential of the hydroelectric station to send power toward manufacturing plants, factories, and homes of the citizens of living within our territory. The concrete sta station towered over the Siberian ways and churned out through great amounts of Angara's waters to generate electricity. We will utilize the natural veins of our fractured nation with such a magnificent source of electricity in the region. Our energy supplies will never run dry. Awesome. Really, really, actually really awesome. But now we've got a slight problem here. And it's called Father Men. Do we have enough divisions for that? Not really. Uh, we'll do it like this then. Uh, and actually for this one... Let's finish the Siberian Expedition first to slightly decrease coring time, and then we'll core stuff. So, five days should be enough for us to do such things as this. Anything here? Infrastructure still? Oh, yeah, we actually can do it. Nice. Yeah. Why not? We can actually get another infrastructure. Go figure. It actually works. I'll do all three of these. Uh, 70 days-ish, or over two months. That's not too bad. Oh, the Reds. At first glance, the split between remnants of the Soviets and Baratia and Irkutsk may seem to be a simple old world style power struggle. At last, not everything is so simple. The guess of the situation is that the Berats, under former NKVD Commissar Valery Sablin, have disagreed rather violently with the president of the presid Presidium, Genrik Yagoda. Holding in some lofty ideas, as young men are often prone to, Sablin claimed a radio tower amid Baratia and proclaimed its ambition to unify Russia and restore the Soviet Union. Yagoda was not pleased by this and declared Sablin and his ilk revisionists. However, their ideological split does not matter to us. The factories of Irkutsk, as well as the broadcast system in Baratia, are valuable assets to the people of West Alaska. We do not care whether or not Salvin and Rigoda is right. The fact of the matter is, they are sitting on a rightful soil. If they would not leave, we will then evict them. Which, they've already won, so the boot camp. Gun. Give. Barked. A voice beyond Jack. Swole bow does back, tearing his attention from the row of bottles yonder. For all of a second... He thought a grizzly bear learned how to walk. Man certainly towered over him like one clad head to toe in first match. Only the ostrich hand just spelled all man bear thoughts. Before they could return, Jack handed his father's gun over. And then it flew up and went crack, crack, crack. Three bullets flew with Siberia's winds and toppled three shattered bottles into the snow. The man bear did in three seconds what Jack couldn't do with thirty. He resisted the urge to gape. Elbow bent, leg too wide and shaking, said the bulky man in a harsh broken English. Close your eye when pull, trigger pull. Move with recoil like grass and wind. He held Jack's gun closer, inspecting the fine patterns that ran its length. Revolver with ivory handle and fancy drawn. Useless. Without looking away, continued. Zapanea, Alaska. No place for a child playing toy soldier. Where from? To Texas, Jack muttered hurriedly. Amerikanski, huh? Uh, then you you think you are a cowboy hunting Indian in forest. Keep shooting like devil, and men here slit your throat with vodka bottle themselves. The man turned to the range over five curious shooters. This goes for everyone who come to Magadan. Here you not fight naked Tartar with bow, you fight army with more gun and brain than you all combined. Forget Hollywood Demero. Dermo. Dermo. You are the black bear. Find a soldier of fortune in entire world, and we teach you to fight like one, or you die like one. The Texan barely gathered himself when the Russian walked away. Wait, he called it. My gun, er, <clears throat> sir... Get better gun from supplies and tell Trophim, boss sent you. Python, said boss as he left. Is your name now like your gun? Is your name now like your bad gun? Python. Oh, huh, that's cool. Yeah, 30 factories, not bad. 
9 out of 20? Well, we're making our way in this world. Slowly, slowly, slowly getting more experience for Nancy and the soldiers underneath. Or under. Not bad, the Reds. Not bad, not bad, not bad. 40 more days for experimental helicopters. Don't mind if we do. 64 Tokyo Olympic Games come to an end. This left quite the impression. Alright, so I'm actually really glad we were able to beat Irkutsk. So now we only have to focus on the Divine Mandate of Siberia, which is going to be a big old bad word to take out. Because they're not easy to take out. They, they almost never are. And uh, Better industrial equipment. The economy is doing great. And new reforms in industrial subsidizing resulted in the shipping of updated industrial equipment across the country. Products are being produced quicker and cheaper. The further progress of mechanization into the once ossified industrial world will prove a boon to work and manager alike. No more long, horrible hours. No more subpar products screwed in by imperfect human hands. Industry continues to march forward. These were a long time coming, however. Increases in budgets and a renewed focus on what our industries were making have increased support for a much needed renovation of the country's industrial equipment. Excellent. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, I do see that they have soldiers over here. I'm not too worried about them. Really, I want the victory points. Amalon, as well as... They're going to have this as the core eventually, so... We must well do that one. So, Operation Thunderbolts. Leader of the... Oh, well, I guess we don't have to read about that. If you'd like to read about it yourself, go right ahead. And Operation Guardian. Not bad, not bad. The Faithful, huh? Has at war with them. The Wanderers, eh? Alden exists. If you'd like to read about this one, go right ahead as well. Ooh. Lessons learned. Werbel has defeated Salvin. His lands now belong to the soldiers without borders. Salvin was young, if he were to be honest. Salvin impressed Werbel. At the age of 23, he has ruled over a land of his own, and his ideas, along with his firm, resolute faith in them, have carried him this far. The people of Baratia love Salvin and his ideology, willing to die for his dreams of a union of the proletariat, hearkening back to the times of Lenin and the old revolution. However, what he had made was not a nation of soldiers, but dreamers. In the end, their vision was of a new and better union did not pan out as well because they that they as well as they expected. These young people have no business running a country. They shall throw all the reforms alongside the institutions they are meant to apply to straight into the dustbin of history. Werbel will, uh, will honor Salvin in his own way by using his own calloused hands to craft a system that does not and will not fail. Wow, we got two events at once? Holy cow. And anything here? Investments? Yes, please. We got so much political power. At least we did. The Stars and Stripes. Do you come from America, boy? Werbel asked, toying with a revolver in hand. A chop smith a Smith Wesson. Something for emergencies. For the past half hour, or past hour, he had loaded and unloaded bullets into it, spinning the chamber, playing with the safety, all from the comfort of his arm. The boy, in aid of age 19, tried to dissuade him from doing, in a pussy's parlance, rash actions. Verbal might be drunk, but he knew what the F he was doing. No, no CR. The boy's French accent bled into everything, stating his words with a tang of wine, bread, and croissant. Or something like that. Werbel is a stream of consciousness guy, especially when he was drunk. Though I've read some stuff in the newspaper and magazines, I think it's fair country. The boy looked down, at least compared to France. Werbel roared with laughter. The aide looked at him with puzzlement and then growing offense. Before the young man could say anything, however, Werbel cut him short with a quick chamber. A, snap, a chamber snap of the revolver. Those magazines don't tell you anything about the full picture. The mercenary clambered down from the heights. They don't tell you jack squat about America. Land of the free, land of liberty, and the land of opportunity. You can find gosh darn near anything there. It's maybe except for the fun of Merc life. He took a sip of his whiskey, finally putting his gun to its holster. Save up, save the F up. You're young, 21, right? Maybe you'll find the girl of your dreams and settle down in a nice farm somewhere in Texas or something like that. The A could do nothing but nod. Drunk Werbel was a fond of wisdom and violence, and the boy could do nothing but smile at the ridiculousness at his extravagance. Whatever you say, sir, in field training, one of the now unwritten rules boss taught in boot was that complaining is a free action. Ten clicks away from civilization and buried in sub-zero snow, now Private Jack Svoboda had a lot to complain about. His stomach suffered hunger pangs for want of breakfast. His legs still ached from yesterday's march. Frost bit into the skin like the fatigues weren't there. Half a brain went to keeping his mouth shut, half prayed to... Witless dude would enter his scope before sundown. And like his gripes were an in invocation, the radio blared alive. Python crackled with the Russian tinged static patrol. Two at three, uh, three line. North, 300 yard. I take left and three. Finally, copy boss. Jock near shouted as he reoriented his Springfield towards his, the forest's edge. As promised, two men shoveled out from the trees. The Arctic camouflage given away by gunmetal black. Why they were here, and what were they. F and what for were fleeting thoughts through the tired, hungry mark. Soon these yahoos dropped dead, soon he RTBs to a warm eel. Jack swallowed a breath and helped, like Milnar's taught. Hand steady, he peered through the scope. The patrol had stopped. Left's buddy neared a pine and fiddled with his zipper. Trigger squeezed a fine cross inch to his pisser's head. That's right. Just painting the yellow snow before a bullet blows his brains out in one. Three cracked the thirty out six flew and hit the snow. Had swiveled in panic, another crack more distant before it left his lost or left lost his. His buddy had it barely covered up before a third knocked him face first into his own piss. Just like that, Jack had missed his ration ticket for tonight. Wasted shots bought only time in the firing range. Oh boy. Gotta be cold there. Gotta be really flipping cold. 
Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Look at that. Basic mechanization. Basic mechanization actually will probably help us with mass mechanization, in which we get what? Better consumer goods. Monthly population does go up by 20%. Get 10% more recruitable population factory, which is something we need immediately, and more output, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. The Lord's word for all to hear. In the ancient times of days past, it was through a manual that the lowly and forsaken were given the arm by which to rise above the oppression of tyranny, violence, and sin. Christ's own crucifixion served as the end of his mortal service on earth. However, a new vessel of the Lord walks amongst the meek and lowly, preparing to spread his word all across corners of this frozen world. It shall be the day of reckoning for every barbarian, tyrant, and cultist as a father journeys forward to bring the light of God to the fiendish waste. And so greatly did the father take up the podium, speaking out to the select few beside him, with a voice heard around the tigers. Brothers and sisters of the bright world, is it not we who bring forward the promises of God from the scriptures into the world? Yes, it is true, our home of Russia has come under the despairs of bandits, dictators, and marauders. But know this, brothers and sisters, as it says in the scriptures, whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth or gives to the rich will only come to poverty. It is thus, our duty to rise above the choking grasp of these tyrannical madmen. For the mighty Lord seeks for justice to rise in our broken world, that we must be the, the first deliverer of judgment in his namesake. From the hill of Amalan do we pray for all the name Russian. It was thus. That the Father's revelation came clear. No man of a pirate nor a persecutor could seek to overturn the might of the Lord. The followers of heaven and thus marched on, rising above the chains of enslavement and oppression. However, while such men and women fought and killed for their freedom, the Father whispered softened words. But I tell you, you love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those that hate you, and pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you. Is it? It is heaven's hymns that we sing. We get worth for it and peasant uprising. Gosh darn it. And let's get through one more focus and then we'll call it an episode. How about that? Well, we're actually probably poised to do pretty well here, actually. How strong? I mean, they have national spirits to help them out. Yeah, fraternal militias. Faith in the Father is really good for them. They don't get any more defense bonuses, do they? They get a lot more attack, though. Lessons learned. Up to not seven and nine divisions. A lot of manpower in reserve. But let's finish this off with... Reclaiming the Soldiers' Republic. Sure, why not? With the defeat of the Reds in the West and their lands entirely within our hands. The Republic of West Alaska, the first of its kind, is at its greatest extent. The cities of the regions of Irkutsk and Bratia now reside within our borders, along with their factories, labor force, personnel, and expertise. It seems that with every day that dawns upon the Far East, the mercenaries are making more and more progress. It is time now to proclaim the foundation and ideas of our new state. A Republic, not for the people, but not for any ideologies or ideals, but for soldiers. For those that are nations abandoned, for whoever that these have lived out their usefulness. The Soldiers' Republic. All warriors from all nationalities will be welcome to the call of the soil of West Alaska their home. Whoever believes in Werbel's ideals, we shall give guns, uniforms, and a last spin on the battlefield. No longer shall the coatings and appearances of nationalities and ideas divide us. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. I apologize again for being a little ragey in the first half, but if you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we beat Father Men and unify the far eastern portion of Russia with the Republic of West Alaska. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.